Hey guys, Jeff Smalley here. I'm here with uh, Jeff and Carrie from Ocean Bridge Media, and I'm very excited. We're sitting here after the presentation that was just given. So there's two there's two big takeaways from the presentation that happened, right? Out of and uh, the, the two questions were, how should I utilize micro influencers, right, as a company, whether I'm small, medium, or leading, right? from the size, and then what is the ROI that I should be looking at from utilizing micro-influencers? So if you guys wanna comment in terms of how I should get involved on the three levels of micro-influencers that you talked about, and then what really is the ROI that I'm looking at on the micro-influencers moving forward? Can I jump in first? Sure, go ahead. Okay. Well, you mentioned three different levels. I'm assuming you meant the mega, the macro, the micro. Absolutely. So we're definitely going to focus on the mac micro. Yep. Because of that return, it's significant. Yeah. And the reason is because when we look at the mega, the celebrities, it's fantastic. You get a lot of awareness, but you don't get any response. There's no communication back. Kim Kardashian is going to sit there all day long and, and, and write you back about you know the product quality. She doesn't care. She's right. got things to do at the time. Oh, really? Okay. 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 So <laughs> macros are a little different. So they'll comment once in a while. You'll get some likes, some shares. But the micro, you know, that's sometimes that's an employee or an existing customer. And when we hire them, they actually become this brand ambassador. And it really shows in the numbers. And we do step back and do the analytics. They actually are the highest CPM when you compare to other mac uh, influencers and even posting on Facebook, sponsorship ads. But when we do the econometrics, when you break it down from the click-through rate forward to the conversion of purchase, it's the lowest conversion of purchase number ever. So you're paying like, I believe it was $40 for a conversion, 45 plus, uh -huh. uh, for a Facebook sponsored ad, we're at $15 for a conversion from a micro-influencer. And that's a one-time purchase. Now we don't have the data for a lifetime value customer, but once you hook them and you've got that quality and that service, they're forever. So the micro is just fantastic with that. Secondly, as far as ROI is concerned, we've seen differentiations. If you go with just a few micros, you're gonna see around, I, I say a one to four. Every dollar you spend, you get four bucks back. That's great. Okay? Now there's also a confluence going on where we could actually inject quite a few. And we really like doing this because with our platform, unlike any others, we can step back. And we take a look at real time uh, data on what every single influencer is doing. You know, the responses, the comments, the likes, the click-through rates. And if a micro influencer isn't performing like the others, we just simply shut that off. We take that budget allocation, kick it over to the ones that are performing, and we get that ROI even higher. So we've seen up to $6.50. So one of the most important questions that also came up in the, in the presentation was your vetting process. And I think this is what you guys do very, very different from the other media agencies out there. So why don't you guys comment just a little bit in terms of the, the, the level of diligence that you put into the vetting process and the millions that are in your database with micro-influencers. I think it's really impactful for the sellers to understand how much diligence is put into that, right? To really provide purity with the influencers that are provided uh, for various projects. Absolutely, and the interesting thing is there's over 15 million micro-influencers out there. Not that we have a network of 15 million, but what's unique about us is we do have a large network, like you mentioned, and we're always adding and removing people from that network. So first of all, we're always looking for, for the trust and integrity of their site and essentially with their messages they're trying to get out. We also look at things like how many people are following them, but how many people are they following? Again, it really helps us weed out any kind of fake profiles, uh, folks that shouldn't be in there and you know we don't want to waste any impressions right so we want to maximize our client spend so one of the ways we vet that out is there's interview processes with the various micro influencers that we choose and it's done through a third party but essentially there's certain criteria they need to meet uh, in order for us to align them with one of our brands yep that's great and then you also I think you mentioned uh, before no fraudulent activity, you're obviously insuring with uh, with the micro influencers. Right. right. So yeah, during the presentation, with that with that process, there's no fraudulent activity. So every dollar that goes out being paid for impressions and click through rates is actual. It's going to a person. There's a, there's a live influencer behind it. That's right. You know, it's just not some farm from yep. India, and we've we've found those. We've seen those before. So you got to be careful with that. 
Definitely. We also want to make sure that they are brand ambassadors. You know, uh, so they say the right things contextually. At the same time, they don't look like they're corporate. You know, so it, it comes along uh, across as uh, just two friends talking about a fantastic product. Hey, you know, I've got a little headache. I tried the CBD. You should try it too. Sure. You bring up a good point. You're not going to get from a mega uh, influencer dictation back and forth based on the comments that you're making. But with micro influencers, they're really engaged and they want to hear what their followers are saying and they want to speak back to them. They actually generally care about these people. Yeah. They really do. And so also part of the, it's interesting though, part of it, um, uh, the interview process is we have to sell our ourselves to them, you know, the product to them. They need to be able to believe in the product. They want to try the product. They want to read up on the product and they have to believe in the product, you know, because the people that are following them, a lot of times it's a smaller audience. Well, that smaller audience is actually a prize of friends and family. So they're not just going to take something just for a quick payday. So they want to know and they want to believe in it. And when they actually want to help people out, they want to help their friends out. And that comes across uh, unlike any other advertisement, anything else you could ever do out there. This is definitely word to mouth. That's fantastic. So, yeah. Any questions, oceanbridgemedia.com? Correct. Oceanbridgemedia.com. Oceanbridgemedia.com. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thank See you. you.